वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ टी एम जी इंडियन फुटबॉल राउंड अप वी आर जस्ट अ डे रिमूव्ड फ्रॉम द स्टार्ट ऑफ द हीरो इंटर कॉन्टिनेंटल कप ट्वेंटी अ टूर्नामेंट वेर इंडिया विल डिफेंड देयर टाइटल अ टाइटल दे हार्ड अर्नड by beating big teams like New Zealand and uh, St Kitts and Nevis in uh, Mumbai this time it's happening in Ahmedabad are you excited kevin i am very excited i would have been more excited if the intercontinental cup was in mumbai again but sadly it was only the camp that could be held over here india's favorite place to have the camp mumbai football arena Chiranjit I believe you are in Ahmedabad. Yeah I am in Ahmedabad. I'll be watching the match from the stands. Uh, India will play Tajikistan on Sunday and uh, just before I left for Ahmedabad what happened was uh, Igor Stimas came out with the final list of squad players that have been picked for this tournament. Have you taken a look at them Kevin? Oh very closely. There is a surprise omission in the squad and I think everybody will be talking about that. I think before we talk about the players that made it to the squad probably we can take a glance at who was omitted from this promising looking tournament and uh, was really looking forward to see Sosai Raj but sadly he doesn't make the cut. Oh uh, yes. Chiranjit what's that expected? I mean uh, he has been uh, sort of not firing that much well enough in the last uh, few matches. and uh, with uh, other players coming in uh, like farooq choudhury who has i am hearing he's uh, really uh, impressed in the uh, training camp and he was uh, doing really well in the india blue versus india white practice match that they played as as well uh, i think igor stimash is thinking about uh, young players i think he's thinking about uh, fresh talent to uh, get into the squad before the world cup qualifiers come along and he sees the uh, in uh, intercontinental cup as well as i mean espe- especially a game against a team like tajikistan where we are more or less comparably matched as an opportunity to try out new players and he has shown us in the uh, kings cup that he's not you know scared of uh, trying everything out so, so michael susairaj misses out this one i would not i would not say this is the end of the road for him or anything what about what about jackie chan singh i think i am a bit disappointed to not have him in the squad and no, no, he he's done everything right i think uh, he really w- should have been part of the squad if not starting that's a bit a bit disappointing for me jackie chan uh, uh balwant you can expect no balwant is really not uh, top notch at at his uh, at, at his game and uh, he's not really you know, uh, lit up uh, with his uh, domestic season as well so so i i can you know see the understandable reason that uh, balwan was an included but jackie chan i think i think he is fairly decent season with uh, uh, in in the isl i think he deserves a shot at there well i will never say a word against jackie chan man i've been uh, in uh, awe of that uh, man for a long time uh, back when he was uh, you know the threat a wingman partnership between uh, Jackie Chan and Satya Sen uh, that was scorching through the season in I League again i would not say it's the end of the road for him, for him. maybe it's just igosh timash is trying to uh, take a look at uh, other players in the wings uh, maybe it's just uh, you know just see how it works out and maybe if it doesn't work out he he comes back in indian national team has uh, no shortage of matches and there uh, will be huge amount of rotation it's disappointing to see uh, michael susairaj and uh, jackie chan not being there but it's again you have to look at the upside of having farooq manveer and uh, the new uh, promising midfielders getting a chance narendra gehlot also yeah. gets picked up i, I think he is the star pick great to have him uh, he missed out in, in the previous game as well so th- this is a great great uh, shining star uh, up on his sleeve there uh, making it uh, to the national squad hopefully he does get some field time there goes with the theme of uh, giving uh, the new youth players a chance as well because uh, he's the second indian arrows player uh, that has gotten into the uh, national team setup national senior team setup and uh, it just looks like there will be many more to come i mean i'm i'm actually for the first time in many years i'm actually just curious about what happens when the saf championship comes along because if igor stimash is using this much young, young players in uh, a co- competition like the intercontinental cups what is he going to do when he has all the incentives to send another under 23 team or under 21 players uh, 
to a soft tournament everything goes along with the team un- uh, until you arrive at this name anas you know coming back from retirement uh, you know everything just this moves out of place where when you see anas his name right there you know among uh, uh, the other upcoming players and uh, that just makes you think you know what what exactly is in plan uh, having him uh, coming out of retirement and uh, playing playing uh, playing this tournament so you know it's clear that he is part of the major plan and he looks like you know the starting player but you know what could be the immediate uh, the next step for anas there it's just uh, him giving us a, a better defense against a team like syria i think that's that's just what it is uh, we need uh, somebody like anas the thodika to be there with uh, sandesh jingan in the central defense uh, to safeguard against uh, good strong middle eastern teams that are way better and are expected to have like 60% position there are times when you have to try out the uh, young players and there are times when you have to rely on your experienced players to get you through a game ultimately it's about winning games right i mean uh, don't get this wrong igor stimash is being universally pl- uh, praised by uh, uh, fans all over fans and critics all over but if india for some reason did not beat thailand if they lost after uh, stimash made seven or eight changes there would be a sizable number of fans just calling for his head already because that's what happens a step a coach makes uh, one wrong step and loses like three four matches in a row and everybody will start calling for uh, his sacking so igor stimash has to play that balancing game he has to get us wins at least like i, I i'm not sure if india will go into intercontinental cup as favorites to retain the title uh, they probably won't but we need to notch up a couple of good victories uh, so that uh, we can look back at this tournament uh, as something that something we got you know a few ranking points as well yeah so talking about uh, uh, having a, a new fresh set of players coming in uh, rollin bojas he's back into the mix and uh, that is not very clear when we've take, taken a step ahead uh, to have that new central core of of the team uh, rollin bojas you know makes a sudden appearance there I don't think uh, he, he is expected to play any role, uh, at least a major role in, in this tournament. He is just you know one of those players who was forgotten in the last camp, and then all of a sudden he makes it through and he is part of the squad. You know, th- there's a lot of competition here in the central midfield. You know, we're talking about uh, Brandon being there, Thapa, uh, Amarjeet. Obviously, you know he is just you know making a name for himself in all, every team that he's going to. Roland Bojas, you know, just suddenly doesn't look like he he. does belong to the core central team here well he might be the guy you bring in when you are one nil up after 65 minutes and uh, the opponent team is uh, attacking and playing a physical game and uh, you need to do some damage control that's when uh, a tall guy like uh, rolin borges comes in handy or in a game where our attacking game is not doing so well so we need to score from a set piece that's when you get uh, rolin bojas in he's tall he's lanky he can uh, play the physical game and we have seen and he's a, tri- a tried and proven talent so i i'm actually very happy that this this team like has uh, the ability to play three or four different kinds of football and that i think sort of sets igor stimash apart from uh, other uh, coaches that we have seen in recent times at the international team i mean you knew what stephen constantine was going to do with this uh, team yeah but igor stimash you just don't know because he's going to give you three matches and three different kinds of football and and i like that i i i think i don't think we should be expecting india to play tiki taka or like something that aspires to be tiki taka every game because sometimes you just have to grind it out yeah yeah you know rightly said uh, possibly that's the whole idea to have the the varying uh, challenges that that uh, the, the strong teams are bringing into this tournament probably we expecting a full strength team to come in and uh, borges rightly fits in to one of the plans that uh, stimak must be having there absolutely let's just see how everything turns out when india take on uh, tajikistan this is supposed to be the game where india gets off to a winning start and uh, makes a headway towards qualifying for the final i would say it's a must win game uh, going into the competition what do you think india from from the past one year has really you know moved up places you know earned the respect of the, the teams coming into this tournament 
and uh, rightly so and uh, that performance uh, at the king's cup under a new coach there's just a whole lot of new ideas coming in and pouring in from from the new head coach so i'm really looking forward to all three matches that we're going to play and you know that just makes it more interesting maybe if we stretch our logic a little bit we can put a grudge match angle on the uh, tajikistan versus india match because uh, most of the players of tajikistan national team are from fc istiklol and bengaluru fc were beaten by fc istiklol uh, in the afc cup so maybe this might be uh, our chance to set the record straight a little bit and uh, get a good couple of uh, FIFA ranking points in our table so let's hope if you are around uh, the city please go and uh, buy your tickets and uh, watch and support uh, the Indian national team in the stadium otherwise you know this the match will be on Star Sports 2 Star Sports 3 Hotstar and at the red tfg football on twitter will have a running live commentary and while the sunday night will be full of back and forth on the field uh, we have actually seen some off the field back and forth happening uh, between uh, two of the important sides in indian football i would say the all india football federation and the i league clubs aiff president prafull patel met the i league clubs uh, in new delhi after a uh, you know this this was the meeting that was long time coming that has been demanded for months it finally happened uh, and there was a lot less combative attitude between the two sides uh, when they finally uh, sat face to face uh, prafull patel came out and said uh, i league will carry on for now that's what he will try to do to get afc to agree to that i league and isl happen as they are now for the next 2 3 years as a transition period and uh, in the meanwhile they will try to work out the solution where a unified league of some sort can happen but while the matter was presented uh, to the media and fans as uh, a continuation of what we have today in actuality it seemed like uh, they were turning the entire league structure upside down because uh, uh, prafull patel came out and said i league should be recognized by afc going forward which just jumped out as a very strange thing to say because i league has always been recognized uh, by uh, afc as the top division league of india so for the aiff president to get afc to recognize i league again it must be that i league would be de recognized first and that would happen if isl is given the status of the top division league uh, and the afc champions league uh, qualifies a uh, slot that comes with it and then i league is again you know worked back into the system by maybe it gets the uh, same status that isl has right now as a knockout cup or whatever i don't know it's it's a bit weird equation to try to pull off uh, the bottom line is even though it looks like everything is the same and it's going to continue it won't be the same because uh, i league's importance and uh, and the club's commercial viability will be greatly reduced if i league loses the uh, top division status but then again fsdl is uh, trying to get isl the top division status so right now aiff is in a bit of a bit of a conundrum because uh, they have to try to please both sides here and then the i league clubs uh, had their own meeting and they came out with a statement saying okay whatever aiff said we are ready to wait for another 2 3 years and have i league and isl happening simultaneously uh, until something can be figured out but we are not giving up our status at the as the top division league and we are not giving up on the afc champions league uh, qualified slot that is given to i league champions as of this moment now all the eyes are turning to uh, the aiff executive committee meeting on 9th july which will take a final decision on how aiff will proceed on this matter kevin your your early thoughts on what's happening right now uh, just unbelievable that this happens in indian football or no as uh, that even possible is 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 this something with, that we see on tv or on a daily basis something you know, that is like a fiction but no this is this is this absurd happening to indian football where you know what the things that were working well about 5 fi- or 6 years back you know, prior to 2014 or even get back to 2007 when uh, the i league announced 
so slowly all of a sudden you have a picture change and you have a new ent- entity come in the eyes will comes in to start to uh, take the attraction away uh, i league uh, loses all its, the genuine aspect that it had about football all of a sudden you're you're talking about football but it's not about the top li- top flight football it's, it's about something that was not recognized in in the first instance and just the year back you get recognition for the isl and all of a sudden the genuine product that was out there that was deserving for more much more attention is is not getting any no is is just completely disregard for what i league has done to indian football and we we, we see heading towards a direction that that we all know is not going to be pleasing to anyone who, who is a fan of indian football no be it an isl fan be a fan or be it an i league fan totally unbelievable coming back to the point where you no know, where we stand at the moment you no know, it's not easy to have the transition now that you have a complete new entity into the top tier isl is close to being announced the 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 top flight football and i league i league clubs you know that united i league club uh, the handful of the strong fighters that are remaining we wonder how long can they fight along you no know, they they will have to give in one break one crack you know everything will be in titters and bitters and that's what we we, we can expect we we've, we've received 3 years but i don't think there's a solution in place to have the unified league promotion relegation should stay but i don't see that's happening sometimes it is so disgusting to understand that we are heading into a ditch all that we can do is just watch helplessly the chiranji the complete you know is is it's disregard for what i league was and what it has come to this moment this is difficult to digest at the moment you do seem to be taking up uh, you know the the worst case uh, scenario that is possible from this uh, so what do you think is going to happen uh, the i league clubs have said they do not accept letting go of the afc champions league qualifier spot which in fact they have earned you know india did not always have it it took uh, you know semi final uh, finishes and beating west asian clubs from high ranked uh, member association countries uh, by the likes of dempo and east bengal for that afc champions league qualifier spot to come to india in the first place so it's a bit strange for anybody to even suggest that uh, isl which has not done anything to earn any extra favor uh, or uh, extra ranking points for uh, indian clubs just comes in and takes the best uh, spot in asia for available for indian clubs what do you think will happen does aiff executive committee listen to the i league clubs and their uh, uh, protest against being forcefully relegated to second tier and uh, or or do they just go ahead and unilaterally declare isl as the top division because then we are in the real murky waters because take act or quit that that would be the situation for i league clubs either they have to go to court or they have lost this battle right then and there it's not clear what what the idea of uh, the executive committee should be uh, going into uh, the statement made by the aif you know if you just read the press release it's just empty it's empty it doesn't you know count for any action point from there just reading the list of demands or, or you know the the actions that i expected from the aff uh, what, what the united i league uh, clubs have said i think that is what to be discussed in the executive committee uh, i don't see anything drastic again just like we discussed last time we might see one point where we see a timeline given to this action that that we calling as the unified league uh, apart from that i don't see any drastic announcements coming in in the way of uh, the newest season that probably will kick off another 3 months from now and kevin you talked about possible cracks in the unity of the i league clubs It seems like that's happening already because neroka's name was not there in the joint statement that was released by the i league clubs of course we know that they are under a new management now uh, that has been uh, dealing with some financial strife they have taken a much more uh, favorable uh, approach towards uh, aiff it doesn't seem like they will be part of this fight anymore uh, and east bengal and mohan bagan i don't know what they are up to at the moment because uh, at one yeah, point they don't know what they are up to <laughs> very well said because i mean i have always said if you are going to be against the establishment you do not count east bengal and mohan bagan as your biggest allies because those two clubs over the century have always thrived 
uh, with the establishment though last time they were anti establishment in a true sense that was before independence and i would say if somehow fsdl goes and go- gives them a sweet deal they will uh, slide into isl even now uh, we have seen mohan bagan's uh, financial secretary debashish datta talk favorably about uh, praful patel's proposal but their name is still on the uh, letter that the i league clubs the united i league clubs they're calling themselves uh, that uh, they sent to aiff so i don't know about the status of these clubs maybe east bengal will be more committed to this uh, cause of forcing aiff to create a unified league because quest is calling the shots but mohan bagan i don't know man six clubs left now in the alliance if east bengal and mohan bagan leave i don't know what they have left because the corporate interests which are minerva punjab and uh, gokulam kerala fc was still in the alliance uh, they signed away their right to protest if they get forcefully relegated in the contract that they made with iff isol fc i don't know what they signed when they were brought back from relegation uh, that they did not deserve but again that was the official procedure churchill brothers i don't know what they signed it's a, a bit of a mystery because they technically they pr- probably were not a corporate entry but they were brought uh, back into i league through a judicial process which was the weirdest thing i've ever seen but but i don't know if any of the remaining clubs in the alliance have not signed a contract with the iff that puts them in a bad spot if it, if this thing goes to court what do you think does this ultimately go to court or uh, and and if it goes to court then what happens i i don't i don't think we are into the moment where we can expect the clubs going to court because right now the alliance that we see again it, it's not very strong at the moment you know that it's always plus minus is happening uh, we, we don't see you know, them being so strong enough that we have we've had consistent fighting back from all of them it's it's, it's mostly been uh, minerva punjab or, and uh, churchill brothers in, in the forefront you know most of the times so that that is the biggest problem that we that that the i league uh, the i league clubs have you know they don't have strong contenders to go uh, down till the last to go and fight with 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 the with the stronger uh, entity that we know as is the aif or the afsdl so i i will see you know the battle ended before even it begins so we might not even see uh, the, these clubs stand together till till the last moment yeah of course uh, chennai city are uh, not officially a part of this uh, protest movement they are sympathetic to it but they're going to stay out uh, they have their own priorities real kashmir are obviously not a part of this indian arrows of course not and uh, the new uh, entrants uh, from uh, manipur trao fc i mean they have not said much about this they they have stayed out of this fight so far it's a murky situation man i don't know what happens and how long they can keep this up big especially when a squeeze like this comes in from aiff this this is 60 to 70% chance i would say 70 to 80 that aiff executive committee just disregards the protest letter that i league club sent and just goes ahead and uh, makes isl the top division it looks like headed that way if it doesn't if i'm wrong i'll be the happiest but just calling it as i see it so let's uh, wait for what happens 9th july is now the new d day it coincides with the first icc cricket world cup semi final so don't worry uh, no matter what happens the media won't make too much noise about it for now let's just go on to something way more pleasant and something uh, i'm very excited about india under 19 men's team coach uh, and uh, indian arrows head coach uh, floyd pinto was in conversation with kevin it's a very long and detailed conversation where he goes through his uh, time at the arrows transition to india under 19 the granatkin cup and also previews the intercontinental cup kevin what do you think would be the main points to watch out for in this interview one of the points that i was very keenly interested uh, in in uh, wanting uh, to understand is how is the team headed after newly appointed technical director that the indian football has uh, Doro Isaac you know that that was one keen attention that I wanted to pay to and another point was you know what experiences from the other countries uh, that that the team has traveled to and uh, been part of tournaments 
that there's always something to learn from developed nations that that rightly put out by floyd pinto on a practical not just you know uh, something that is very philosophical very practical points uh, like always uh, floyd pinto gives us you should give it a listen today with us is coach floyd pinto he is the head coach of india's under 19 team and also the head coach of the indian arrows in the i league a big welcome to coach floyd how are you doing hey kevin how are you good morning to all the viewers glad to be back on the tfg podcast uh, hope to have a similar one as we did earlier oh yes uh, if our regular listeners must be uh, remembering the last time we spoke to coach pinto ranjit and me were also in conversation uh, so that was just about last year so we t- spoke about the under 17 team uh, that uh, coach floyd was assisting at that moment and also about the under 19 a uh, lot of things uh, if you have missed uh, do catch up on that episode we are back talking about a uh, lot of things and uh, beginning with uh, coach floyd handling the i league team entirely by yourself how was it you know the the feeling of uh, getting started with, with uh, a development side into the i league conceptualize uh, how do we go ahead playing foreigners in the other teams uh, big stars pressure situation or i think uh, you handled pretty well yeah uh, definitely not uh, not a pressure situation because as a coach you uh, you're always looking forward to such challenges uh, in your in your tenure as a coach so uh, prior to working with the indian arrows in the i league you know all the time that i spent was part of an academy setup so uh, working towards a saf afc kind of tournament uh, and to be honest i was definitely looking for another step up you know in the coaching uh, in my coaching career and that would be to coach a team in a professional league that is in the i league or the isl or a competitive league you know that would be the step up so fortunately the indian arrows project had taken shape and uh, it was an opportunity that you know i couldn't say no to and uh, i was relishing the prospect of uh, going up against some of the best teams in the country uh with a bunch of very enthusiastic uh very lively and uh, fit boys that had just come past uh an under 17 world cup campaign yeah, so yeah. definitely it was a very uh a very exciting period for me as a coach and our coaching staff to work with such a bunch of uh, lively guys and also you know uh, talking about experience talking about uh, uh exposing the youth and the future of yeah, of a country to a whole new level so not just you no know, holding on to the challenge i think they braved it so well they went on the uh, the the arrows went on to beat the the then uh, defending champion minerva punjab and also in the super cup that was a dream run you know getting past the nisl team as well so what was your favorite moment uh, in the entire campaign uh, definitely the uh, the fact that we 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 were able to progressively develop these boys and educate them as the i league went over was a, a very encouraging sign that, that these boys were eager to learn and get better and better but definitely the 3-1 uh, win against uh, mohan bagan oh. at the salt lake stadium <laughs> yeah at the salt lake stadium with the last game of the season you know that entire setup that of the match and the result and the way it happened uh definitely it stands out as one of the best moments in the i league and, and, and also it received some good uh, recognition from from the f- uh, fans that attended that game as well yeah the fans like i said you know and our boys have been mentioning throughout we the indian arrows we are like the home team wherever we go you know <laughs> we've never had like an home or a away match every match where we go we've had support uh, in some form or the other be it an online support or be it people coming to the ground and watching and cheering for us so uh, we are received with with lot of love and affection wherever we go so that's been a very encouraging sign you know that uh, the arrows have been able to reinvigorate that kind of support of a football fan towards a youth development team and towards the i league in general which was very encouraging so the the arrows uh, just for the record uh, finished 8th in the i league and that's really a, a not a bad record uh, you know going by uh, how the team has progressed from from a year uh, playing into the i league uh, the, the project of the arrows was revived again and uh, again matches like the real kashmir game where 2-2 the scoreline did say 2-2 but uh, the the equalizer that came in the last moment th- these were highlights of, of the entire campaign uh, that just you know proves 
that these boys are capable of much more and uh, yes uh, so moving ahead uh, into the under 19 where uh, last season the under 19 uh, traveled abroad play face a uh, lot of teams some top teams in uh, uh, in and around the globe and uh, also to the uh, the transition from uh, the arrows to the under 19 and recently uh, they did play a tournament uh, the granatkin cup uh, so what was your experience uh, and the boys you know what was uh, majorly looking forward uh, before you headed to into this uh, memorial tournament which is played i think annually it is played annually uh in fact they had a break last year because of the world cup being hosted so uh the tournament was a much uh, smaller version of what it would sup- was supposed to be the last time that we participated was with the under 17 world cup team prior to the world cup so it was uh, uh, we knew it was always going to be a challenging uh, tournament out there but what made it even more interesting is that post the i league post the indian arrows project there were a lot of players that uh, you know were now uh, had uh, graduated from uh, uh, the elite academy uh, team and had now gone into the isl clubs to start a new journey in their footballing career so there was a lot of rebuilding to there was a lot of rebuilding that had to take place so we went about uh, having a very extensive uh, uh, period where we had a lot of trials for players we saw around 80 to 85 players on trial from various clubs which were scouted uh, during the during the elite league during the i league during the second division i league through the season mm-hmm. and uh, so you know once we uh, once we uh, got back post the break in the i league we started building towards making that prospective squad towards the granatkin tournament uh, and uh, uh, to be honest you know uh, uh like i said before we before we left for the granada in tournament that this, that tournament was uh an opportunity for us to uh let the boys express themselves get as much game time as possible because post the i league and till now there are a lot of teams that are not even started their pre season so we don't have any competitive games to play out here except yeah, that yeah. we play against each other so the experience of playing a competitive uh, international uh, game and uh, granatkin gave us five competitive international games was always going to be a good marker as to you know where we are at this point of time we tried a lot of things as far as tactics are concerned as far as shapes are concerned set pieces mm-hmm. etc are they working or not because it's a different thing doing it in training we can yeah. week out yeah. and it's a different thing doing it in a competitive tournament so we we were very open with the boys and we tried to make them feel as relaxed as possible to express themselves as much as possible and uh, what impressed me with the boys uh, and i said this once we uh, finished off from granatkin is what this was the first time i had seen or had witnessed our boys playing a lot more uh, on the front foot so as to say you know they were not just sitting back and uh, defending but we were pressing high up uh, we had uh, uh, you know the patience to keep the ball at yeah. uh, I, I I think uh, it's fair to mention uh, the game versus Kyrgyz Republic here. Yeah. So yeah. the second minute was uh, when India lost uh, the, the man and uh, for most of the yeah. game we played with 10 men and and we were able to you know reach the penalty you know that 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 shows the character the maturity that the players have got into them. Yeah as far as that game is concerned I think we created enough chances to win about 3 or 4 football matches clearly. in 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 90 minutes and being a man down we even scored a goal you know uh, to take the lead after creating a lot of chances uh, the fact that uh, we conceded late on we were disappointed that you know that we lost concentration and allowed kyrgyz republic to get back in the game but we got to know a lot about the boys that we had both in a positive sense and maybe a negative sense maybe some boys are not cut cut to make it to that level uh, yeah. but what was what was more impressive is that now uh, like you know i'll take you back to the reference in the i league uh, a lot of people have told us that we did really well in the i league and uh, we finished off very well but what was more satisfying as a coach for us is that we were about we were able to change the mentality of the boys to not just being a team that defends and counter attacks but progressively we made the boys more comfortable in possession uh, we educated them 
towards even the smaller things like you know turning with the ball uh, dribbling with the ball that they weren't used to doing in the last few years that they were uh, training and we slowly started taking control of games by keeping possession creating more chances and creating more chances and eventually scoring more goals you know yeah, yeah. so at the end of the i league uh, we were happy with the progress that the boys had made and uh, it was a success for us as a coaching staff that we were able to change that mentality yeah you know that just now, adds up uh, 11 different goal scorers in the i league you know that just shows yeah. uh, the, the the goals are coming in from all directions from all directions yeah and uh, that is one of the uh, like you know we had players like now Prabhu Kangil, we have uh, Narendra, Jitu, uh, Sanjeev, Amarjit. We we were Nintoy. We are banking on these boys now to smoothen that transition with this under 19 team as well. Because you know we don't want to start with square one again. You know going back to what this team was at the start of the I League. We want to start with how this team finished off the I League. You know yeah, and yeah. progress further. So you cannot judge the mentality of these boys, especially new players coming in. players that were not part of the aro setup coming back into the aro setup uh, you cannot judge the mentality of the boys unless and until you play some competitive matches right, and right. you know apart from the first game against russia and which were there were a lot of factors that affected the way the boys played uh, every other game we took the game to the opposition we weren't sitting back we played an open game uh, we were comfortable pressing high up we were comfortable keeping the game open with the opposition uh, we kept the ball possession uh the transition was much better we were creating chances uh the only thing that we were missing was the finishing touch you know scoring some more goals would have helped yeah. but that change in mentality uh in the boys is what i take from that granatian tournament yeah. and now the boys know and that they themselves as a group have established this is how we are going to play henceforth you know and that is more satisfying so now from the tournament henceforth you know we can now progress much further play a much more progressive style play a much more possession based style and the aim would be now to start creating more chances and scoring more goals yeah you know? so just uh, coming back to your point where you mentioned uh, the, the 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 number of uh, games that we play in the i league and also you know, heading in uh, to tournaments abroad you now between that uh, there is a lot to be done a lot much lot more expected Now, what is your experience from you know, taking some learning from the stronger nations that you faced? Now, is there a domestic system that you know is slightly helping the team to play more competitive games, or is there something that you know that can be filled up over here? No, because it's always an, a, a good experience to know what the developed nations are doing different than you know, where where we we could be lacking. Uh, from from our experiences uh, going abroad. uh you know there is a big difference in uh, maybe uh, a team abroad when they are under 16 and when they are under 19 you know uh, the transition that they go through they literally become boys to men you know mm-hmm. because uh, the amount of competitive matches they play not just at youth level but also for their respective clubs at senior level and uh, there are a lot of countries that are asian countries i'll just keep it to the asian countries even the west asian countries and the south asian countries have their players now training with uh, very renowned academies in europe uh, training at a higher level than uh, than what our boys are training out here so uh, so that transition from under 16 to under 19s and eventually when we play against them it's just the experience of playing more competitive matches yeah so that, the uh, number of matches and number of competition that they play is is exactly, so very exactly. desirable because, yeah because we've observed in our boys that throughout the five matches there's a constant improvement from one match to the other and it's it's nothing it's nothing it's no rocket science but as they play uh, more and more matches they keep getting better and better uh, add to that uh, the weather add to that uh, the quality of the food out there the nutritional mm-hmm. aspect you know all these kind of things uh, add up to the overall development of uh, of the player what about technology coach uh, is there uh, a technology bit uh, help that we are getting uh, that you know that wasn't present some time back uh, is there a difference that you know that could be made if we receive you know the kind of technology that the other developed nations are using yeah we are we are we are definitely trying our level best to do whatever is in our capacity uh we raise the level of video analysis 
uh, ever since I've been there, maybe for the first few years, we didn't have a video analyst. Mm -hmm. But now we have uh, access to video analyst. Uh, the other thing that we've, we've, uh, we've, we've managed to improve is the communication between, uh, you know, the first team, the under-19s, the under-16s, and the under-15s as well. So, uh, you know, there is a lot of knowledge sharing that is going on uh, between all the teams right now. And, you know, whatever is used uh, maybe at the senior national team level, uh, if it can be implemented uh, at the under-19 level, it helps close the bridge the gap in between uh, the under-19s and the senior team as far as player knowledge is concerned, as far as uh, using technology is concerned. Yeah. So yeah. there's an effort, there's a constant effort being made uh, you know, to try and be as progressive as possible. Uh, but, you know, it's not that we, we are cribbing out here. We are trying to uh, do the best as much as possible with the facilities that we have. Uh, if we don't have it, then we don't have it. But we make maximum use of the facilities that we have. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, being in Odisha right now, we have uh, a very good environment uh, to train. Uh, the only drawback being that we don't have any practice matches or any friendly matches, a good competitive matches. Mm -hmm. So, so these kind of uh, tournaments like Granatkin are of a big help to us. Uh, until and unless you know, maybe the the I League and the ISL team start their uh, pre-season where we can start playing uh, yeah. a good good competitive matches with these guys, you know, and mm -hmm. get better. Yeah. What was your biggest uh, find of, of the Granatkin? Uh, will it be fair if I mention uh, Akash Mishra? He could he, could he be the find of of the of the tournament there? Yeah, you 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 make your name by the way you play, you know. And uh, like I said, when when we go for such tournaments, you never know which player is going to step up. We hope that more players step up and uh, make a name for themselves. And Akash was definitely one of them, you know. Uh, uh, when he joined us uh, last year for the Arrows, uh, he was one of those players that literally went straight into the starting 11, you know, as a left back. It is very difficult. Imagine the under-17 World Cup team has been training for around four to five years. And uh, for any outsider to come and break into the first 11, uh, it, it's near impossible or very difficult to get in. But uh, he had the physical profile. Uh, he uh, slotted in well at the left back position. But he was very unfortunate uh, with a few injuries, uh, you know, when we traveled to Croatia and Serbia and uh, there was a recurrence of those injuries throughout the season which is why he barely played anything you know if not basically he didn't play at all mm -hmm. throughout the I-League season uh, so he was basically like a new player for us we kept rehabilitating him and uh, when we regrouped after the I-League and he came back he was he had regained almost you know full fitness and uh, we were going to use this Granatkin tournament for him to just settle down, you know, and just get some get some playing time. For me, if Akash would have just played 90 minutes and, you know, without any injury, uh, I would have been uh, very happy. But he surpassed that uh, by by some way, you know, by, by, you know, making that position his own and not just defending well, but also contributing goals for the team on set pieces. Yeah. So he was definitely one of those players that uh, impressed us a lot and gave us a lot of confidence. Uh, the the other being, for example, uh, uh, Gibson, who was, uh, there are now, he's part of that uh, AFC under-16 team that, that did so well with Viviano at the AFC under-16 championships, you know. Yeah. And uh, we are hoping that majority of those boys can make the step up to the under-19. Because it's not that easy to make the step up in a year's time and play, uh, you know, two or three years uh, ahead uh, as quick as possible. Because uh, the cutoff, as you all know, for the AFC Under-19 Championships is 2001 one And all these boys who were with Bibiano are all 2002-2003. So, we are already playing a year uh, down as far yeah. as the Under-19s are concerned. So... To make that step up uh, into the into the under 19, like for example, Rohit Danu did it during the I League. Uh, Vikram Pratap would have done it, but ev eventually he got a little bit injured and couldn't play part of the I League campaign. But Gibson has now made the step up in the Granatkin tournament, and we are happy that you know the more players who can who have the AFC experience with Vidyano, if they can make the step up 
to the under 19 level it smoothens the transition because they know the process of how we train and how we expect what we expect out of uh, the elite academy so talking about the players that impressed you uh, that really were the highlight of the team uh, the carry the team on their shoulders uh, it wouldn't be right if, if we didn't talk about amarjeet you know look at how he's risen from strength to strength going in from the captaining the under 17 team leading on to the i league uh, arrows team and now he makes it to the uh, the, the, the senior national team uh, how how proud of you uh, prou- proud are you as a coach uh, looking at him grow from strength to strength oh we have you know sometimes we talk about this under 19 team and granatkin and people forget that we missed amarjeet throughout the tournament <laughs> because he is not just another player for us he is the captain of the team he is a leader both on and off the field and uh, he he personifies exactly how we want this team to play you know in each and every aspect and we were we were really happy when he got the call up for the senior national team and uh, the excitement that we had when we got the news that yes he is going to make it to the final squad for the thailand cup for the kings cup was unimaginable you know uh, part of us uh was a little bit sad because you know we've lost one player for the granatkin tournament but majority part of us was like yes you know we're going to have one uh, the first indian arrows player the current crop of indian arrows players to represent the senior national team and uh, we were just very excited we and you know we had a conversation with the senior team coach as well as you know how impressed he was with amarjeet and we were more than happy that you know he's representing the senior national team yeah and yeah. Uh, amar not just amar ji say now for example in this camp that's happening in mumbai right now even narendra is in that camp yeah so we have two potential two potential first 11 players of the under 19 team who are now contesting for a place in the senior camp so uh, the more the amount of players uh, experience that level of football because uh, the senior national team coach uh, igor stimak is also trying to progressively change the uh, playing style of the national team which is similar to what we want to do here with the and 19th as well so that they are only just going to learn more and more and come back and hopefully share the information with this team as well wonderful so looking forward uh, for the under 19 team uh, later in the year they will be playing the afc under 19 championship qualifiers uh, so teams that uh, india has club with uh, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan, and the big name Saudi Arabia. Five nil was was the scoreline that you know, that uh, let us uh, away from from being qualified, and uh, they are back again. Saudi Arabia is in a group. Uh, what what are your thoughts on that, Coach Floyd? Yeah, definitely uh, uh, a tough group for us, and uh, we have to play out of our skin uh, to qualify for the next round and the final round and. It's a, it's a good thing that we've been there before, uh, and uh, so we will be familiar with uh, the playing environment. We'll be familiar with uh, the surroundings that we are going to be in uh, come the AFC qualifiers. And uh, definitely, we've already started preparing uh, uh, for that already. And uh, hopefully, this time we can uh, churn out a different set of results. a combination of which that can help us qualify for the final the indian national team does have a new newly uh, elected uh, appointed uh, technical director doru isaac and uh, on on that note uh, coach fly this is something very interesting that i think uh, uh, will be out there for everybody to learn uh, so having a technical director in place you know how how does that help streamline uh, all the national teams you know talking talking, talking from right uh, the senior team uh, going to the under 23 the under 19 so is, is there a way that you know uh, a philosophy is followed for all the all the, the national teams is there something uh, as you know a, a meeting or a workshop that comes along on a daily uh, on on a regular basis that helps you know have the teams play a similar style of football uh, could you shed some light on that uh see you you you, you mentioned it uh, perfectly by saying streamlining the process and at this moment of time uh, you know uh, mr mr isaac doru the one thing that i'd like to say he's very he is very uh, communicative to all the to all the uh, national youth teams uh, and 
uh, we talk on a regular basis as far as uh, what he requires from us uh, as head coaches of each and every national team and uh, the idea right now is to streamline the process as to uh, a lot of various factors that will together uh, help us identify a clear philosophy uh, towards how we want the national youth teams to play uh, we want to we want to do a lot of things over a period of time and at this point of time it's just uh, getting all the head coaches and all the coaches together uh, a lot of brainstorming is going on right now uh, a lot of information is being collected right now with all the youth teams and all the all the coaches involved and over a period of time uh, we will definitely develop a way in which we want to uh profile a player for the national team a national youth team we will also develop a, a definite philosophy as to how we progress from the under 15s to the under 16s and to the under 19s okay. and uh, definitely it will be a more uh, open system where uh, where the national youth teams and the clubs are working in unison you know to find success at the staff and AFC level. So, so uh, we I already see you know uh, a bit of uh, things in the works uh, already, and uh, uh, it's it's kind of a, a mini revolution that we are seeing in 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 the Indian football, and uh, where where we see a lot more openness eh, about how the teams are playing. Talk about the under nineteen. Talk about uh, the senior team as well. Uh, on that note, uh, I, I would like to hear your views on how. Uh, you perceived uh, india play at the recent uh, uh, kings cup and uh, you know, it, it does uh, you know, come on to you of the ideology that uh, a, a national coach uh, the senior team national coach uh, you to match now what did uh, impress what impressed you about him most you know what, what are the things that you found interesting how india has been you know, recently looked upon uh, in the new fashion way that uh, we have been shown similar to all of you guys you know as 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 a coach i'm even more excited and i'm very keen to observe how uh, mr igor uh, tries to shape uh, the senior national team going forward especially into the world cup qualification rounds uh, but uh, having seen uh, the matches at the kings cup uh, having heard uh, him speak about what he wants to do with the senior national team it's so uh, refreshing that you know uh, we have a senior national team coach and a team that is now trying to progress uh, and play a much more uh, modern brand of football a much more total brand of football uh, uh, which is more pleasing to the eye and which is more uh, in sync with the modern trends in football worldwide and uh, like i said last year when we uh, w- what was more happy for me is that these under 19 boys were able to progress through the i league season and uh, through further better education and uh, through better implementation of more progressive ideas and i think that's the same thing that will happen in the senior national team with uh, the players that are able to absorb more information the players that are able to play a more uh, progressive style a more possession based style uh, uh, will be the ones you will see week in week out in the national team and it's exciting to watch a new set of players play under him and uh, we are looking forward to watching all the the matches of the intercontinental cup live you know on tv hopefully amarjeet and narinder make it to that team <laughs> and it will give us a good sense of you know uh, okay this is how our national team is going to play moving forward and that would give these boys you know the opportunity to prove themselves and play that kind of football even in the under 19 level so that you know uh, like he said once you know the boys hard work and perseverance should not go to waste so if these boys work hard and these boys you know actually make an effort to uh, to play the way we want in the senior national team amarjeet and narinder are uh, examples for them that their hard work and their perseverance is not going unnoticed you know yeah. so yeah. that's that's the good thing and we are looking forward to some good exciting brand of football yeah. uh, in the intercontinental cup Yeah, so uh, coach, could you just uh, give a brief about the teams that will be coming in? Uh, Syria, Tajikistan, and North Korea. 
Now you, you must have heard about uh, them. You must have you know, ha- have an idea how how the national teams are. You know, what can we expect from these teams? You know, what kind of challenges can they bring to us? Physicality, technically superiority. You know, what what can we you know, probably expect in this Intercontinental Cup? I think each and every team uh, at this point of time is going to be a big challenge for us, especially with uh, the style of play that we intend to play. Uh, I hope. all of these teams bring in you know the, the best team possible to give us the best possible uh uh competition the best possible three matches for for uh, for Fochigo to decide as to how he wants to go moving forward uh uh Syria are a are a big team uh Tajikistan have a very aggressive uh, uh style of play their youth teams are one of the best uh in asia at this point of time and uh, that has transitioned into the senior team as well uh north korea a very physical a very agile a very athletic so each and every team is going to provide uh, a stiff challenge for our boys in the intercontinental cup uh, and uh, hopefully we can come out of these competitive matches with a lot more positives moving forward into the world cup qualifiers So uh, coach Floyd thank you very much for joining in and sharing your inputs about various topics and uh, your experiences your feedback about uh, players i think i'm sure they will be very uh, pleased to know that the words that you had for them and also sharing in uh, a, a quick uh, preview of the international contact cup uh, we wish you all the best for the upcoming uh, under 19 championship uh, qualifiers uh we and uh, we wish uh, we make it this time and all the best to you uh, for this forthcoming tournament Thank, thank you, Kevin. Thank you have, for having me on uh, TFG podcast. And uh, the AFC Under-19 Championships are a long way uh, for us. You know, we have a lot of small tournaments coming in between, and we look to you know solidify this team as much as possible in these upcoming tournaments. So hopefully, we keep getting better and better, and uh, we have more players like Amarjit and Narendra making the transition to the senior team, getting more and more experience. and hopefully the next time we talk we'll have much more to talk about you know yeah, uh, yeah. much more great great yeah thank you thank you coach thank you thank yeah, you for joining yeah, me yeah welcome welcome so you heard the in depth conversation between uh, kevin and uh, uh, india under 19 head coach uh, floyd pinto there and there were people asking on social media will indian arrows continue i think you got the answer pretty clearly there there's no stopping indian arrows right now especially after the brilliant season they had last time in i league so let's just quickly take a question uh, from one of our uh, viewers uh, in the fan speak section Harsh Murarka said in a comment you guys said that another season could go on this way but FIFA and AFC said they will ban India from continental tournament if AIFF continues with two leagues for another season which is true is making the point the AFC FIFA road map uh, that uh, TFG exclusively revealed to the world uh, last May it has a clause saying if india does not get a unified league by 2019 uh, the clubs will be banned from playing in acl or afc cup but that ultimately is a suggestion made by some afc and fifa uh, experts that's not a disciplinary decision that afc has given so it it does not really bind them to actually execute it kevin will have to accommodate this as a possibility in this situation because let's say Praful Patel goes to AFC to get a uh, uh, you know get them to agree to an extension of the uh, transition phase for two three years and AFC says no. Then we are in a situation where uh, Indian clubs may get banned from playing in AFC Cup and uh, AFC Champions League. So इतना झगड़ा कर लिया ACL qualifier का slot के लिए that the just goes away for everybody. And technically it is possible that we can face some san- sanctions from the AFC. but you know, knowing uh, the reach that we have praful patel is not just uh, the president of the af he has already got uh, reach right up to the fifa levels so it, it's not uh, that we are that we are knowingly playing with fire over here it, it's very much likely unless you know we have not done things right in the past we are far away from uh, facing any sanctions you know what is likely is probably you know we know who, who will be the party that is hit in the i league clubs will be the one who will be wearing the brunt of uh, 
the this wrongdoing that we started in 2014 or even before that the, the this is the timing that is important you know uh, uh, 2017 we hosted the world cup uh, 2020 we are hosting another world cup this is all on the good books of fifa that you know india is doing right things and uh, getting a challenge uh, from the afc in regard to something that is well known to everybody it's difficult to you know see that coming along so uh, a sanction by any by continental uh, body or the global body of football is really difficult to to perceive right now yeah and i would have to commend you kevin because you have been uh, sticking to your prediction that you have been making for the last 2 3 weeks that nothing much will change there will be i league and isl simultaneously and uh, when the aiff president praful patel made i league clubs he came out and said exactly that uh, you are turning into a prophet in your own right you know, like rahul bk prophesized three things and all of them came true uh, you have prophesized one thing uh, that we will count in your books for 2019 that has come true that at least aff is trying to do so just before we end the show let's just a- ask you to make another prophecy uh, what happens the score line for india versus tajikistan ah. <laughs> Uh, the score lines are something not that really doesn't favor me all the time uh, but again i will give it a shot i'm looking at a close game for for india uh, even though you know tajikistan is is bringing probably one of the strongest side that we can expect probably india takes this 2-1 okay we have prophet kevin going for his second prediction that can come through this uh, month and if he gets it right he will be just one shot of rahul beke so let's see who gets more predictions uh, right in 2019 let's get a race going uh, we will continue that conversation obviously next week when we come back for the next episode we will be talking about how things turned out we have india versus tajikistan on 7th of july then syria versus north korea on 8th and tajikistan versus uh, syria on the 10th and we will be back with our next episode on the 11th 9th of july is the day of the aiff executive committee meeting so all of that the matches and whatever happens off the field in new delhi those will be discussed in the next episode come back for that thanks for watching this uh, episode and do remember to send us your questions your thoughts your criticisms anything that you want in the comment section we will pick up one or two of them in the next episode and discuss thanks again for watching come back next week <laughs>